evening. We're really excited to have you here, and hopefully we'll have a few more people in a little bit. Once we get started, at, uh, my watch was running a little behind, and I have now about three after. That clock there is either um, fast or mine is just really slowing down. Okay, all right. Let's uh, start with uh, a couple of the dignitaries that are here. I see um, Mayor Steve Brockett has come. Where are you? There he is. Welcome. And I see that uh, Judge Jean Galassini is here. Welcome. And other than those that are going to be at the podium here in a few minutes, I'll introduce them as, as we can. But I think that's all the elected officials besides our illustrious panel up here, as well as a few over here that are um, going to be introduced in just a second. Now, <clears throat> let, me catch my notes here. Well, let me introduce myself. I'm Marcia Sturman. I'm chairman of Republican Women. And I'd like to introduce the board. We have Karen Dupre, who is our treasurer. <clears throat> Gloria Bailey is our secretary and timekeeper. Rocky Bellasini is second vice chair and timekeeper. <laughs> Trish Wilson is first vice chair. And she's going to read, uh, she's going to read a letter in just a minute. And uh, let, me, uh, let me tell you about the rules. Okay, rules. Each candidate with an opponent will have three questions. Each response will be limited to two minutes. Each will have a 30 second rebuttal once the opponent has responded. Rebuttals are optional. Candidates whose opponent is not present will have four minutes to give their summation. A coin toss will decide who goes first in any contested race. Candidates will have a one and a half minute introduction as well as a minute and a half Closing. Questions may be submitted in writing, but they must be directed to a particular candidate or office. These will require a limited response of two minutes. Keep your questions short and to the point. No questions will be allowed regarding presidential candidates, senatorial candidates, or congressional candidates. We are staying on topic to those in this forum. Questions regarding any other topics will be void. State representatives will go first. County commissioners will follow, followed then by district attorney candidates. Letters from candidates who could not attend tonight will be read first, followed by short statement from our unopposed candidates. Those candidates requiring the most driving time will be allowed to go first. Anybody have any questions? Silver City attending an important treasurer affiliate meeting. However, I wrote this speech and requested it to be read in order to update the voters on what I have been working on during my term and what has been going on in the treasurer's office. I am currently serving as a board member for the New Mexico Association of Counties. I am involved in many of the legislative issues that affect all county departments and offices. I welcome any information that will help me to understand and be effective in the solving any issues the county may have. I am seeking a position on the executive board where I will be even more valuable. Regarding larger county issues, I also serve on a committee to correct tax problems that exist because of current statutory inconsistencies and on other committee 
and on another committee that endeavors to get Congress to understand and fund PILT, Payment in Lieu of Taxes, to New Mexico counties. You may not know <clears throat> that Otero County is 88% government land. We are working on getting full funding from Congress for this land. Legislatively, I am very committed to getting the law changed to limit elected officials to serve a three, four year term. I began work on this issue while serving as chairman of the NMAC, Treasurer's Affiliate. Also, we are pursuing a bill to allow county treasurers to accept credit cards in their office as payment for taxes. In closing, I would like to take the opportunity to brag that the Otero County Treasurer's Office is the best treasurer's office in the state. We consider ourselves to be the model in that. We collect more, manage more, serve more, and extend beyond our county in assuming more responsibilities than any other office in the state. My staff and I operate in a cohesive team, as a cohesive team, and serve Otero County to the best of our abilities. I look forward to serving as your county, Otero County Treasurer once again. My office doors are always open and welcome any questions the tax ma taxpayer may have. I also appreciate your support. Please vote for me, Grace Gonzalez, in the upcoming November election. Thank you, Grace M. Gonzalez, Otero County Treasurer. Okay, and next our unopposed candidate is Otero County Clerk Robin Holmes. Good evening. I am Robin Holmes, your candidate for County Clerk. I would like to first thank Marcia, the Republican women of Otero County, for inviting the candidates to speak this evening, and thank you to all of you for being here. <laughs> <laughs> I just got started. <laughs> I am in my fourth year now serving you as Otero County Clerk. I am running unopposed in this general election, and I thank you, the citizens of Otero County, for the confidence and trust that you have in me as I serve in this position for the next four years. One of the most important and difficult areas of my job, especially in these days of such scrutiny on our elections, is serving as the chief election official for this county. My office will continue to conduct fair and accurate elections. We will continue to provide the service that the citizens of Otero County deserve. And if there is anything that we can do in the county clerk's office to assist you, please let me know. Thanks for your time, and I would greatly appreciate your vote of confidence if you're voting early or on November the 4th. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. And also unopposed is Senator Diana Duran of District 40. Good evening. It's nice to see everyone here this evening. I am Diana Duran, for those of you who don't know me, and I am running unopposed in this general election on November the 4th. I'm here to tell you one thing. First, first and foremost, for those of you who have not seen me, it's not that I've been home relaxing and not doing anything. I will tell you that being one of those who is unopposed in the state legislature can be um, harder than being opposed in your own district because our leadership has asked those of us who are unopposed to help those in our, in our own caucuses who have opposition. So if I'm not traveling the state attending committee meetings, and I will tell you I serve on eight interim committees, then I'm traveling the state assisting all of those in our Republican caucus who have opposition, and it's one of the jobs that I hold as a leader in the Senate. I am now in my sixth year serving the Senate Republicans as their caucus chair, and in my 16th year in the New Mexico State Senate. As I, after I'm re-elected in November, I will be entering my fifth term, and at completion at the end of that term, I will have served 20 years in the Senate. So I tell everybody I think I'm just growing old in this job. But I will tell you that there are a number of issues that have come up regarding Otero, not only Otero County, but a number of, of large issues, healthcare, 
of education and of course always economic development that we work on continuously, not just during the legislative sessions that come up in January and February. And we work well with our mayor and Al Gordo and in Tularosa and, and, and also in Cloudcroft on those issues that they need help with. So I hope that I've served you well. I want to thank the Republican women and the Republican Party in Otero County for all that they've done for me. And I want to help, I want to thank everyone, Democrat and Republican alike, who are here or who are, have been involved in Otero County and in my district and have supported me over the years. Because if, without that support, I could not do the job that I have to do today. And just in closing, I want to tell you that my number's in the phone book, I have my email. Please continue to contact me, either through email or phone or however you can reach me, because I appreciate hearing from you. And although you may not get a written response or a phone call immediately back from me, I do read those emails and I will work on those issues that concern you. So I'm happy to hear from you, I appreciate hearing from you. And just in closing, I want to add that Senator Vernon Asville, who serves in our Republican caucus, is a today meeting at a, at a meeting, a water and natural resources meeting in Albuquerque, and he asked me to let you know that, otherwise he would have been here as well today. So you have a good, good, a, a good delegation working for you in Santa Fe, and we will continue to do that, and I appreciate being invited to be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, as stated in the rules, we're gonna have a coin toss. So our first, yes. Oh, you need, yes, you need to, yeah, you need to go because you've got, you've got a scoot. Okay, I'm sorry, I apologize. Yes, please. This is Yvette Harrell, and she's going to read a letter from uh, Representative Nora Espinosa. Yes, okay. Um, actually, I'm going to tell you, I got called to come up here and speak on behalf of Nora, and she's a great friend of mine, and so I was completely honored. Um, and I want to just encourage everybody to vote for her, but I also want to share with you some of the reasons why I feel it's important. For one, Nora is a passionate woman, and she was born to serve. She serves her home, she serves her community, she serves her church, but most of all, she serves New Mexicans. She, um, she's passionate about her responsibilities in Santa Fe and stands accountable to all New Mexicans for the, for the legislative decisions that affect us on a daily basis. She sets the standard high, not only for herself, but for her peers. She has, she has set the bar very high, and we can be proud as voters and residents to have Nora representing us. I feel confident that we can trust Nora. She truly puts our values and our concerns first. And let me give you a couple of examples. She voted, she voted on bills to protect our property rights. She voted to support Jessica's law, which would put child molesters in prison for life. She um, got introduced, or she co-sponsored and got past Senate Bill 31, which will expand schools and dual credit programs. In committee, she was successful in tabling House Bill 626, which would have raised the rate of tax on oil and other hydrocarbons. Her moral values and beliefs are evident in her belief in the sanctity of life and marriage. Nora firmly believes in the sanctity of life and the sanctity of the marriage between one man and one woman. She also believes in the Second Amendment, the right to own and bear arms, and she strongly feels that our borders need protection. She feels that securing our borders is essential. So it's evident from just the information I've shared with you that Nora is a woman with integrity and a passion for improving the lives of all New Mexicans, and I urge each of, each of you to vote for Nora on November 4th. Thank you. trails on your next meeting. <laughs> okay, and then uh, Nate Cody has his representative and Brenda Purvis. Welcome, Brenda. Good evening. My name is Brenda Purvis, and I want to thank you for the privilege of speaking on behalf of New Mexico State Representative Nathan Cody of District 53. I would like to read to you a statement he has prepared for you tonight. I want to thank the Republican women of Otero County for inviting me to participate this evening. I regret I cannot be here in person, but I would like to share these thoughts with you. I want to commend the Republican women of Otero County for your role in educating and informing the community on important issues and for hosting events such as this. 
your organization provides an important open forum contributing to good government and not bipartisan elections. Your open forum is making it possible for candidates with diverse ideas to come together to present different 